Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to the first side project of our 3D game engine development series. This is a clone of Wolfenstein 3D running in our game engine. And I'd like to stress again, this is running in our game engine as is as of tutorial 23 of the series. If it couldn't be done relatively simply with either the engine there or with the Java standard library, it's not in the game. So, this really just shows you how far our engine has already come. And yeah. Now, before I actually get into the FAQ, I'd like to do just a really quick playthrough of the uh, sort of demos levels I set up here. Just to sort of give you a feel of what we're actually going to be creating, and how it actually turns out in the end. So, yeah. Now, I'm already through the first level, there's three levels, so it's not going to take too long, so don't worry about that. And yeah. Now, just in case you never played Wolfenstein 3D before, it's this really old first-person shooter where basically you're this guy in this Nazi base, and your goal is to run around and kill the Nazis, and that's about it. It's a really old game, and there's really not that much to it, so that's basically all my clone has. You're this guy, you're in a Nazi base, you run around and shoot people. It's pretty much just like the original. Well, I, I guess I did change a few things, like... For instance, in the original, it was one of those old DOS games, so you had, didn't have like mouse look and WASD controls. You actually had to use like the arrow keys and such, and it was a little bit of a different experience. I decided to go ahead and change that to a mouse look based system with WASD, just 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 because it's probably what more people are used to. And yeah, oh, <laughs> and you're probably wondering why all the graphics are from Doom rather than Wolfenstein. I actually don't have a copy of Wolfenstein anymore, or else I would have used them. I lost it about 10 years ago. I don't remember exactly what happened. The computer that had it probably just died or something. But yeah, other than that, this is basically what Wolfenstein's like. You're in this big Nazi base and you run around and shoot people. There's not much, there's not that much to it. And yeah. Now, the levels you're seeing are actually sort of my own design. I have the engine set up so that you can paint a bitmap, and different color channels will mean different things, like the red channel will map certain textures to the wall, and the green channel will make the floor different colors, and the blue channel will place certain items in the area, like monsters or health kits or whatever. And yeah, I'll talk all, all about that when I actually do the tutorial. But yeah, so that's how I created all these levels. I just opened up an image in paint.net and just paint it. And you got this. So, yeah. And they're actually a lot more straightforward than I'm making them out to be. I actually am intentionally dragging all these levels out just to sort of show you everything and show you how the game works and such. Because, you know, I only have three levels. I don't have a lot to work with. But, yeah. And I also, I guess I can show you where all the enemies are because the game does record how many enemies you kill. And if you get 100%, it will tell you. And of course, being the hardcore gamer that I am, I'm going to go for 100% kills in every level. <laughs> but, yeah. The levels for the most part really aren't nearly like this. You, there's like three main paths, and they all lead to the same place. It's not like you get go to some completely different place if you take path B as opposed to path A or something. And, yeah. And you can just go through levels like that. And they're relatively short, but I did it like that just so you get a little bit of a different experience every time. Maybe this time you play, you want to go through path C rather than path B. Maybe this time you want to try level 2, this other path in level 2, and see what happens then. And, you know, just to add some replayability to it, just to give the player a little bit of a different experience. And, yeah. And, oh yeah, all the Nazis... I actually really like the way the Nazi enemy actually turned out, even though there's only one of them. They have this sort of weird way of being both incredibly easy and somewhat th threatening at the exact same time. Like, they're pretty easy to kill, they only die in like a couple of hits, but they're actually kind of deadly. They can do about, they can take off like a third of your health in one hit if, if you're not careful. So, even though they are a little bit of pushovers, they're actually pretty deadly if you're not paying attention. That's why I'm being so careful in this big open section, because there's all these Nazis running around, and I actually died here the first time I was trying to record it. I, I was ran in here just charging around, trying to shoot everyone, and some guy just went up, shot me in the face, and was like, game over. I was like, crap. But, yeah. So, there you go. And actually, really with that, that's 
pretty much all there is to it. I've, I've shown you all I have in the game. So, yeah. And in case you haven't noticed, the level always ends with the same sort of door texture. Oh yeah, and one thing I guess I should mention, there's only 16 textures in the entire game, so I didn't have a lot to work with when I was creating this thing. That's why you s it gets a little bit repetitive, so sorry about that, but yeah. And that's pretty much the playthrough. That's all I wanted to cover there. I just wanted to show you how the game actually plays out, and I'm restarting the footage now, by the way, just so you'll have something to watch when I'm doing the FAQ, but yeah. There you go, that's how the game works. And now, on to the FAQ. So, question one. Why are you doing a side series on a Wolf 3D clone? What's the reason? And there's sort of two answers to that. First, why are you bothering to do a side series at all? And secondly, why specifically are you doing the side series on Wolfenstein 3D? As for the first question, the reason I'm doing a side series at all is it's sort of part of my software development pr practices. I find that when you're developing a piece of software, especially something big like a game engine, it's really easy to look at what you have to do as some abstract set of features or something, and just completely forget what the software is supposed to do in the first place. So I find it's really helpful to, at some point, every now and then, just take it, the software and just throw some task at it, something that's supposed to be able to do and see how well it can handle it. And that I find that's really helpful to find where it's doing okay, where it's not, and where a good direction might be to head, rather than just say, okay, here's the next feature, let's implement it, and just trust it's going to work out in the end. That's the reason I'm doing a side series at all. I want to see how well our game engine can actually run a game. Second reason is, well, I, well, I should say, the reason I'm doing Wolfenstein 3D specifically is because, mostly because it's just a relatively simple 3D game. You run around, you shoot people. You can run into walls, you can open doors, and that's about it. There's not that much to it. It's pretty simple. It, it gets the point across, and, you know, I sort of consider Wolf 3D to be sort of the hello world of 3D gaming. You know, if, if you have trouble running Wolf 3D, then something's seriously wrong with your engine. And, indeed, we're going to find quite a few things our engine could do a lot better. Like, just, like take the gun, or well, just take any 2D sprite in the game, really. It's, it's such a hack to get that working in our engine, because our engine has absolutely no support for 2D at all. So, it gets a little bit interesting when you try doing things like that. And, yeah, and again, it really helps you find where you need to improve, because again, I consider Wolf 3D to be the hello world of 3D gaming. If you have trouble with Wolf 3D, then you're doing something fundamentally wrong. So, yeah, this is really going to help us figure out where our engine really should go. And also, that's another reason why I'm not jumping straight into doing things like shadowing and 3D animation like a lot of people want me to. Sure, those are cool things to have, but what's the point if you can't run a basic 3D game? That's my standpoint. Question 2. What will I need to follow along? And, like I said in the playthrough, this whole thing is based on the 3D game engine that we built in the 3D game engine development series. This whole clone demo that I'm showing right here, this is running on that engine as of video 23 in that series. So, you will need that. Now, if you haven't been following along with that series, and you don't want to follow along with that series, then the source code for that engine is on GitHub. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And you can just download that, and you, you can watch like the first three or so minutes of the video one in that series where I show how to set up the project. And after that, you should be pretty much good to go. So, yeah. It, once you get that, that's pretty much all you're going to need. I am going to be using a few things in the Java library, so if you're following along in a language like C++ or something, then you may need some libraries for that sort of thing. If you really want those features, I'm not going to be doing anything critical with external libraries like the Java library. But, um, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. You shouldn't need too much to follow along. I guess also I am going to be using, like again I said in the playthrough, I'm going to be using a painting program to draw out the maps. 
so you will need some paint program. MS Paint should be fine. If I would recommend Paint.net or GIMP or something like that if you can bother to, can be bothered to download it. But you know, you're gonna need a painting program if you want to build your own maps for this engine or this game. Question three: What's gonna happen to the 3D game engine series, and what's the sort of relationship between that series and this series? As for what's going to happen to the 3D Game Engine series, nothing. I'm still going to keep doing it. Like I said, this is a side series of that other series, so this isn't supposed to replace it or anything like that. And I'm not going to be starting this immediately over and just drop everything there. I'm still going to be finishing the lighting segment, so... And then I'm going to work on this, and then I'm going to go back to that whole series, so... Yeah, nothing's really going to happen. This is just sort of a game you can build with the 3D Engine. As for its relationship with the 3D game engine. Well, here's sort of the way I'm going to handle side series, since I've never really explained that before. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take the engine at whatever point I decide to start the side series, in this case after the lighting segment, and then I'm just going to start and build the game with the engine as is. I'm not going to be changing the engine in the development process, except for like very minimal things and just building a game outfit. After that, we're going to figure out, hey, this is where something's really not quite right in the engine. And we're going to do sort of what I like to call the side series merger, where we'll just take all the things we learned from doing the side series, where the engine wasn't working, where things could be better, and we'll do a whole segment of the 3D engine series where we're just going in and we're improving the engine based on the things we noticed when we were doing the side series. That's sort of the way I'm going to handle it. And while I'm on that topic, I would like to stress that, again, when I'm doing the side series, I am going to be doing things with minimal modification to the 3D engine. Meaning, if I'm doing something like, I mentioned sprites earlier, if I'm doing something like sprites, I'm not going to go in the engine, I'm going to an add in sprite to support or something just to have sprites. Because, well, that's not accurately representing our engine. I mean, sure, we could go in and recode the whole engine to be this perfect, beautiful thing for every game we create, but... That's missing the point. The engine's supposed to have all those great features beforehand. So I am going to be doing things that the engine doesn't fully support the more messy, hackish way, the way that doesn't involve going in and rewriting half the engine. Because this is supposed to be building a game with the engine, not building a game and then changing the engine to meet the game. You know. And besides, that sort of defeats the whole point of trying to figure out where the engine isn't working. The whole point of these side series is to bring out, well, I guess aside from making a sort of fun side game, the whole point is to bring out where the engine isn't quite working. So if I went in and fixed those while I was building the game, then that defeats the whole point. That's not to say I'm against you bringing up better ways I could do things. I always enjoy reading your alternative ways to the ways I do things in these videos. But still, j just know that I'm not going to be coding this the most beautiful way, and I acknowledge that right off the bat, so don't expect this to be the most beautiful way you could ever make Wolf 3D Club. That's what I'm trying to say here. And that's just about all I wanted to cover here. So, if you still have questions or concerns that I haven't addressed here, or if you need clarification on something I did address here, feel free to ask in the comments, and I will personally come in, and I will try my best to help you out. And with that, that's about all I want to cover here. Like I said, I will be starting the series, not immediately, but I will be starting this once I finish the lighting segment of the 3D engine. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I hope you're as excited about this series as I am. Thank you, and see you next time.